born in Dresden, but when I was four months old, my parents moved to Berlin, and so I grew up in Berlin. My father, he's a physicist. He's working at an uh, electron accelerator, uh, doing some kind of experiments there. Uh, my mother is a computer scientist. So my sister studied chemistry, and so we have all fields. <laughs> natural sciences in our family, if you count mass as natural science. Well, well, uh, I also went to school at some kind of um, uh, it was a school, was a special land. Uh, like in, in, in the, f like I went to school, I grew up in what used to be the German Democratic Republic, the eastern part of Germany, and uh, there used to be the special schools uh, for for the natural sciences, math, etc., um, which were really strong at it, and which actually uh, brought about a large number of not quite famous mathematicians. So, for example, it turns out that in our department in Bonn, we have three people in algebraic geometry, and they all come from this one high school. I guess I've wanted to become a mathematician for a, a, mathematician for a very long time. Um, I think one reason was that uh, at the school, you somehow have to participate in the first rounds of these mathematical Olympiads, and. To my own surprise, I was quite good at it, and then someone became a bit addicted to these math Olympiads kind of things. Um, but at the same time, uh, I realized that there is some. <coughs> what you do at the university in math is quite different from what you do at these math Olympiads, and I was really interested in like, real mathematics. And so, one thing that I think was quite influential for me was when I realized that Fermat's last theorem had been proven uh, by Andrew Wiles. And so I started to read about this, about elliptic curves, about modular forms, uh, and try to understand what they are. At a time when I didn't have any it was a basic knowledge you would need, like what complex analysis, like linear algebra, I didn't know all that. But I don't know, still I managed to understand something and I'm still fascinated by the same by the same kind of questions nowadays. I don't really remember, so uh, I do remember that I was reading some some strange math book for children. Uh, I think it was in German called Fregattenkapitän 1, but um, I don't remember what much of what was in there, but in the form of some kind of fairy tale that introduced a lot of quite interesting mathematical ideas like um, this what is it called, this paradox, uh, where yeah, a man walks against a turtle and he will never make this famous Greek paradox, or how to catch a lion in a desert by repeatedly bisecting the desert. <laughs> Drawn into mathematics heavily was when I started to understand what happens in this proof of Fermat's last theorem. I would say that, that was probably when I was about 16 or so. A zero perfecto at spaces is uh, meant to deal with uh, some of the uh, the most mathematics, I guess, is taking place over what's called the real numbers, so, uh, what you're used to from school. But uh, like number series, they deal with like just the, the integers, like one, two, three, and we don't a priori care about these more transcendental numbers like pi. And it turns out that there is some a different way of introducing transcendentals to uh, the integers, which reveals other information about uh, the integers themselves, which has periodic numbers, where some of two numbers are called close if their difference is divisible by high, high power of p. And there are many parallels between this periodic story and the real story that's more familiar. Um, but on the other hand, there are many strange features about the periodic world. And these perfectoid spaces are meant to capture some of this weird information about the periodic numbers and relate them to a more geometric kind of situation. Well, the name, I apologize for the name, but the name uh, is some. Uh, so there were two concepts in mathematics which were established long established before that. One was the notion of a perfect ring, um, 
which is a ring and characteristic P on which the P's power map is a bijection. And uh, the other was a notion of a so-called aphenoid ring, uh, which appears in, rigid, in this periodic geometry. Um, which, yeah, and then I had some kind of perfect ring, which, however, lived more in this like periodic analytic world, and so it was natural to put the ending oi to it, and so that's how this name came came about. Well. Uh, I originally devised the theory of perfectoid spaces to prove uh, something about, so it turns out in the theory of perfectoid spaces, there is some equivalence between two different, operary different worlds. One is this more periodic world and one is a more geometric world. And I built a bridge between those. And I wanted to prove a conjecture, the weight monotony conjecture over periodic fields. It was known as a more geometric context. And Using this bridge, I could at least in some cases prove this wave monotony conjecture. That's, <coughs> that's the application I originally had in mind uh, with this theory. So I thought about this wave monotony conjecture uh, already for three years until I found this theory of perfectoid spaces. And um, it, was, it was a very slow process. I, I had the feeling that there should be something, and I could make more and more sense of it. So at some point, I had a very precise geometric picture relating the projective spaces in the two worlds. And then I just had to understand what this geometric picture really means. As I said, it wasn't a precise moment. Um, it was during a visit, an extended visit of like three or four months to Harvard. Uh, well, I was discussing a lot with my advisor, Michael Rappaport, and also with my fellow uh, grad student, uh, Eugen Hellmann. And so they helped me in uh, getting my ideas straight. Yeah. Well, the Langlands program roughly uh, tries to relate representations of two different kinds of groups. Um, well, one are Galois groups, which encode some of the symmetries present in uh, solutions to polynomial equations over the rationals. And on the other hand, uh, you have these arithmetic groups like SL2Z. There are these famous pictures of the acting on the upper half plane. And so you have these fancy symmetries there. And uh, so you are trying to relate uh, the representation theory of these two groups. And the usual way this is done is by constructing a space on which both of them act. And then, uh, for example, by looking at the cohomology of such spaces, you get uh, so some vector spaces on which both of them act. And then uh, you can relate the representation theory of the groups this way. And um, I was just talking about this parallel between these periodic fields and these so-called function fields. And in the function field case, um, one knows a lot of geometric spaces realizing such correspondences, so-called modular spaces of Stukas, which were invented by Drinfeld and then used by Laurent Lafork and Vincent Lafork to prove very general instances of the Langlands conjectures over function fields. Over number of fields, over periodic fields, or the rationals, uh, currently they we are more restricted in the kinds of spaces we can use. So and uh, which also puts some bounds on what we can prove about Langlands conjectures. Um, and my current hope is that at, over the periodic places, um, I can construct much more general spaces, which are as general as what you have in the function field case, and then deduce something at least f for the local Langlands conjectures of these periodic fields. Uh, but Yeah, I hope one can do something there. Until a few years ago, we like uh, probably our total conversation time totals to less than five minutes. But although, uh, uh, I mean, I've no, uh, learned an enormous amount of mathematics from him, and a whole lot of my mathematics is inspired by his work. Um, and so every semester he was giving these courses in in arithmetic geometry at the University of Bonn. And uh, I went to these courses, um, <laughs> but uh, 
still there was not much conversation. I love being here. It's a wonderful place. Uh, I like to go hiking. I like to go to this to the Colons. It's when, yeah, it's wonderful.